Welcome back to another episode of the Quantium Cast. I'm your host Ryan Kier of quantumresearch.co.uk and in this episode we're going to be talking about hedging against risk in the real world. So a lot of people think of hedging to be seen through options, so derivatives, different types of things that can protect you against a market move that is in the opposite direction of what you're expecting. Let me give you an example. Say you're an investor and you have a long bias. Maybe 100% of your holdings are in stocks and they are stocks that have high correlations to strong market growth. When the market goes up, essentially these would go up too. Well, what if the market were to just go in a completely different direction? The market would say, correct, I don't know, 30%, 40%, and you would end up losing that much and maybe even more on your portfolio. How do we protect ourselves against that? Well, by hedging, which many of us may be familiar with already, you can buy derivatives. And sometimes the most conventional way is to buy what we call puts. So a put is basically the right to sell. If you're buying the right to sell, you're making sure that, say, if the market was at £67 a contract and you were buying at a strike of £60 and the market moved down to £50, a uh, let's just say FTSE 100 contract, then you would have that £10 worth as a way of making a profit whilst the market moves down. By doing this, you would have to pay a premium. So let's just say, I don't know, 100 points. It's just a random figure out here. So a pound, a contract, you would still make £9 a contract whilst your overall portfolio loses a lot of value and you're able to minimize your drawdowns so you can make fewer losses. And it's important to know that this isn't the only way of hedging your portfolio. You could short the particular index that your portfolio is most correlated to. You can do all sorts of different things really, but that's not the importance of this podcast. We just wanted to give a bit of background info of how you can hedge. And now we'll talk about hedging in the real world because a lot of companies make huge one-off losses. For example, BP, roughly $70 billion in costs, and their market cap is roughly about the same that that is right now. So imagine if they didn't have this huge deep water horizon. Imagine how different that market value would be today. I assume much higher. There are a couple of real life situations I wanna talk about. If you've been following the news, you probably heard about the explosion in Lebanon, and that was at a port, an important port that is crucial for trade with other nations. And that explosion was caused by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. If anybody's not familiar with what that is, it is used to make fireworks. So just think big explosions. That stockpile had been there since 2013. And bear in mind, it's 2020 right now. And there had been 10 complaints, 10 official complaints that were made and none were taken notice of. It's interesting to note that Lebanon's economy was already struggling. They'd recently defaulted on a $1.2 billion euro bond in March. And to add to this drama, the Lebanese pound has lost about 80% of its value on the black market since October. And the nearly bankrupt banking system of their own is only allowing limited cash withdrawals by depositors. If we put Lebanon's past problems in terms of their economic situation aside, and we only isolate the recent explosion, a lot of questions come to mind. You ask yourself, why is it that this was allowed to happen? Why was there 2,750 tons worth of ammonium nitrate in a warehouse, a warehouse that is surrounded by communities filled with families and residential areas? therein. And only now that such a problem has occurred, a lot of people will be quick to say there needs to be change, there needs to be reform in regulatory environments where a certain amount of explosives can't be held near to a certain place. Maybe they need to be shipped somewhere else, maybe stored underground, whatever. But it's interesting that only now that it's happened, people are trying to search for a problem, policymakers, politicians, whatever. But why If we ask ourselves this, why did we not think of this before? It's the same thing with investments. After a bubble, say when the bubble pops and your assets depreciate in value because you're holding a lot of stock or whatever assets that are correlated with strong market environments. As simple as it may be to say and difficult in practicality to actually implement, maybe we can avoid all of these issues 
by actually addressing them in the first place, not after the fact, but before the issue occurs, before we have a huge explosion. For example, let's ignore the oil spill caused by BP. We can talk about the recent one in Mauritius. I think it was a couple of days ago on the 25th, so maybe a couple of weeks at best. There was a tanker that had sunk at sea. And it's important to remember that the value of implementing measures protecting against this occurrence would never truly be understood until this has happened. That same realization after the fact. What happened there was an industry, a tourism industry, had been harmed. That's an industry that's responsible for 14% of Mauritius's GDP. What happens? The fish die. But more specifically, ecosystems are ruined, especially those ecosystems in the water, the surrounding areas of Mauritius. That's a main selling point for people to come there and visit. And now that 14% is probably going to be damaged as a result of just one ship sinking. And maybe if there was a process, maybe to remove oil from the water layer that would protect these fish or whatever wildlife that exists in the water, then maybe this wouldn't have happened and wouldn't have caused so much damage. Roughly a thousand tons, bear in mind an elephant probably weighs about a ton, a thousand tons had leaked into the surrounding waters of the island nation. Now whilst these are really unfortunate things to have heard of and to have seen happen in the world, as we are finance enthusiasts, we like to look for a reason or maybe a way in the future that we can mitigate the damage caused from such a situation because there always is an element of luck. When you do a hedge, it's likely that you probably wouldn't reduce any of your risk from a situation. Say if a prolonged bull market extends and, and you're just giving up a certain percent of your portfolio every year and maybe you've done that for 10 years and you've consistently continued to lose money. The one year that you're right, you win. Now on this circumstance, the one year that you're wrong, you lose a lot of things, maybe even everything. Now with BP, they managed to survive. With companies that are, for example, having environmental problems, they don't emphasize that process of being able to, to make everyone happy. Instead, it's about the profitability situation, which is understandable. The only problem is it may come back and bite you in the future in a way of you may actually lose a lot of money because you've caused environmental damage, lawsuits and all sorts of things on that front. But it is one thing that I think managers or businesses should take more seriously. The idea of hedging against risk in the real world instead of just hedging a portfolio or hedging sales of a particular commodity. It might be a smarter idea to actually put some money aside for these things. For example, if you own a mine in, I don't know, a nation that has a lot of political unrest and maybe working conditions aren't that pretty, it might be a good idea to put some money aside from your yearly profits to help these people and instill values and maybe a strong business to the point where there won't be protests which causes disruption to your business's revenues. And a brand that's ethical sometimes might actually have the ability to sell more. A lot of the times people like brands that are making a good statement in the world. An example could be seen through Google. Google treats their employees well, obviously not everyone, but they are known for having really nice facilities at their headquarters. A lot of people are now thinking of applying to such businesses, tech companies, more specifically tech startups. These businesses maybe have a lot of funding and thus have an ability to help their employees. There was a story on the news a while back. It was about a CEO of a tech company. And I remember this guy had cut his own wage down from like a million plus to the same wage as his employees. And he doubled all their earnings by just covering it from his own salary. And that business grew exponentially over the following years. And it's interesting to see that that may have been a painful step for the individual in the short run. But in the long run, he actually became wealthier from doing so because he was the founder of the business as well. I think it was a payments processing business. But if we look at this from the perspective of, say, BP or businesses that could potentially just cause damage to the environment, be subject to law, 
suits and all of that stuff, it might be a better idea to put aside a certain amount of your profits just to mitigate the risk of a huge potential bust up that could maybe even have your business in a vulnerable position to the point where you may actually risk losing it all just because of one mistake, one mistake of not being within regulation in a certain area. So let's just say that your business involved factory processes and the fumes caused some form of illness for nearby students at a school or a college. And then you suddenly got sued for that. And let's just assume that lawsuit was so grand that you would lose everything. It's important to know that what if you just situated in a slightly more expensive place to mitigate this risk. So to conclude my thoughts on this shorter episode, I think that modern day executives continuously ignore what is right in front of them. Business practices have all sorts of exogenous risk. We see this time and time again. Managers come into a business, give nice short-term investment returns for shareholders because they've managed to maximize revenue. For example, in a, I don't know, a mining business. When you look for gold, you just exhaust the reserves and then your revenues look higher. But in the reality of things, you're actually doing nothing but just mining more. Your business isn't performing highly. You're just exhausting the resources and leaving. They're all of a sudden great executives. But what about the ones that took the measures to protect the businesses from these huge bust ups? For example, some oil companies maybe could have had similar situations as the one that BP had but because of strong management and good risk management precautions that were put into place, such a bust up didn't happen. But yet society doesn't refer to those people as heroes. Why? Because a fact hasn't been seen. We've only seen them work, get paid a lot of money and leave and maybe not even deliver a lot of shareholder returns. So maybe those CEOs, executives, whatever, weren't getting the recognition that they deserved. And instead, we see executives that are able to get short-term returns for us shareholders or whatever, and then they leave, and then the business could be in a horrible situation. A lot of employees, jobs are at risk, and all sorts. I think it's important to look beyond the lines, look behind the scenes, dig deeper, and figure out what is really going on and why things have happened before we come to any conclusions of whether something is a safe investment. In the real world, hedging against risk occurs by taking precautions, spending money to protect a firm against a huge bust up, not spending as little money as possible and making profits as highly as one would hope for. I hope that by listening to this, you're encouraged to be more thoughtful in your process as an investor, to not fall for poor management, but also to hold investments that you like, sleeping at night knowing that you hold them peacefully, instead of worrying until the next morning, having to catch the open and hoping you don't get stopped out. And on that note, I've been your host, Ryan Kier of quantumresearch.co.uk. We're currently working on a video library, and that probably explains as to why we haven't released a podcast in a while, but we aim to have that content out there over the next few months. We'll have a lot of videos looking at anything from fundamental analysis to technical analysis to the execution side of investment. And also, I hope that everybody is keeping safe in this COVID period. We are all desperately awaiting a vaccine. 2020 definitely hasn't been the nicest year for the world, but maybe this extreme heat will cool off and a vaccine will come and everything will be peaceful. But hey, we'll hopefully be able to see that in the next episode or at least over the next couple of episodes. But nonetheless, I've been your host, Ryan Kier of quantumresearch.co.uk. Until next time.